We're running a little bit late, and I know you're not going to want to miss these next um, set of uh, talks. So I am going to introduce uh, Gr Griffin Weber, and he can tell you a little bit about himself. Thank you, Diane and uh, Rudy, for uh, putting this together, inviting me. Yeah, speak up. All right. We have two different a microphone for the room. There's another microphone for the online meeting. And then I'm going to be showing you some things from my laptop, as well as other things that are through VPN connected to through remote desktop to other computers. So we have a lot of stuff going on right now, and we're going to hope it all works. Today I'm going to be talking about rewriting I2B2 in two examples, one called Clinical Query 2 and another called LEAF. So Clinical Query 2 is something that um, my group developed for Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center down the street. We took the Java layer of I2B2 and rewrote it as SQL Server database stored procedures. Um, and our motivations for doing this is, first of all, uh, the data center at Beth Israel didn't allow Java. So if I really wanted to use I2B2 and I couldn't use it over there, so I had to rewrite it. Um, we wanted to retain the same functionality in APIs as I2B2 because we needed to plug into various shrine type networks. And another thing that's really important to us was improving performance. We wanted to run really, really fast queries. And um, you know, we've, we were successful at doing this at Beth Israel, but then we kept going and seeing how fast can we really make things. And we're able to now run queries at the millisecond level with databases with many millions of patients. LEAF is a program that was actually developed by University of Washington's Institute for Translational Health Science. It was inspired by ITB2. I think they were originally ITB2 users, but then they created a complete rewrite of the whole software running on OMOP, and one of the main motivations they had was to create a new user interface that was based on how I2B2 works, but trying to give it a new look and feel and make it more intuitive to users. Uh, they also had a focus on a red cap integration and federated queries. So there's like 10 years of LEAF coming to my little piece of it at the very end. So they just open sourced this a couple months ago, and over the last couple weeks, my group has gotten this installed on our servers here, and we helped create a, um, a database script that allows LEAF to now connect onto an I2B2 database. So um, it's essentially, I'm viewing it as like an alternative user interface of front end to an existing I2B2 um, system. So I'm going to show you both um, some demos of CQ2 as well as LEAF. I want to mention some key people that are here in the room. We have William Yu, Nick Brown, James Norman, I think is online, Nick Benick, who um, was my lab for many years and now has switched over to Paul's group. Um, also, I want to thank the LEAF team. I've been working with Nick Dobb, Cliff Spital, and Liz Zampino on um, uh, understanding LEAF and their work in helping us install it and getting the connections to be to up and running. So first, Clinical Query 2, I mentioned this was what we, we our rewrite over at Beth Israel. We took the uh, the Java layer of I2B2. So to remind you, I2B2 is really a whole bunch of separate applications. Each one's called a cell. Together, they form a hive. There's a front-end web client, the, a Java layer that forms all the APIs, and multiple back-end databases. What we did was we took all the databases, combined it into one big database with multiple schemas, and rewrote all the Java code as database stored procedures. So everything is self-contained within a single database. There's a really thin proxy. All this does is it takes the XML from the web client, sends it to the database. The database returns XML, and the proxy sends it back to the web client. By doing this, it becomes much simpler and easier to manage. It's a single database as opposed to a bunch of separate applications you have to put together. It actually runs a lot faster. Just getting rid of all that network traffic and putting it within a database helps a lot. We then took that sort of faster idea and um, expanded it in multiple different ways. The first thing we do is in Clinical Query 2, we generate a number of aggregate tables. These are roll up from the fact table. So I have a little example of a fact table where um, uh, these are white blood cell counts. There are a couple different loin codes. Each patient has multiple white cell counts during their um, patient history. Then what we do is create a table called the path patient table. So we roll it up so that each line here represents a patient and a path in the ontology. So there's a, instead of multiple loin codes, there's a single path to white blood cell count. Each of these patients has um, one line that represents the lowest value, the highest value, the earliest white blood cell count, and the latest white blood cell count. 
and then we roll up that table into a new one called the path counts table. This has for a single line white blood cell count, how many patients have had it, what was the lowest value, the highest value, the earliest one, and the latest one. And by having these three tables, a fact table, a path patients, and a path counts, given a particular query, we can figure out which is the best table to use. And most user queries do not need to go to the original fact table. You can go to one of those um, two aggregate roll-up tables. Um, and uh, for example, if you want to know uh, how many patients had a white cell count greater than 10, you can go to the path patient table and just look at the ones where this max value is greater than 10. That gives you the answer much faster than having to scan through a large fact table. If you want to know just how many patients have had a white cell count, you can just look it up and immediately get that answer as opposed to again, having to scan through a big table. So this works for simple queries, but uh, if you have a complex query with multiple Boolean um, components, time constraint, multiple time constraints or date constraints, um, you, you can't directly use these tables. It's still going to run slowly, even in clinical query two. So for that, we explored um, a new thing called probabilistic sketches. Um, these are algorithms that take large data and represents them as a small data structure. Um, you can run various queries on that small data structure, things like cardinality, frequency distributions, other um, characteristics of that small data set, and you get the equivalent answer as if you would run it on the original large data. So we create these things called a probabilistic sketch, and we run the queries on that sketch instead of on the, on the original raw data. These probabilistic sketching algorithms have actually been around for decades. They're used all over the internet, routers, internet search, and other things where the data is actually too large to store. You can't really store all the world's internet traffic. So you create a sketch of it, and all your computations are based on those sketches. The trade-off is that you introduce a tiny bit of error, and these sketches have been designed over the years to be very, very accurate. So you can gain many, many orders of magnitude and performance, and they're tunable for the particular error that you want. So um, what we're able to achieve with adding sketches to I2B2 is that we can run complex queries on millions of patients in literally mill milliseconds with usually less than 1% error. The way error kind of works in these things is you say 95% of the time, um, what is sort of the bounds that the error is from the actual answer. So here's like a real quick example of what a probabilistic sketch is. So you have a stream of data that's coming in, or you can think about it as a list of patients. And you want to know how many distinct patients are in the list. The sort of naive way of doing it is count each patient one at a time and have a big table where you're storing how many each of the patients you've seen and how many times you've seen them. But a much faster way of doing that is you can just take the patient number, pass it through, pass it through a random hash function, and get a value between zero and one. All you have to do is, as you're going through this list of patients, keep track of that smallest number that you've seen. The more patients you've seen, the smaller that smallest number. So for example, if I have two patients, on average, the smaller patient will map to 0.33. Um, if I have 10, nine patients, the smallest one will map to 0.1. There's a formula where I can take one over that smallest number and minus one, you get an estimate for what the actual answer is. This is a really bad estimate. There's a huge error to it. So what you do is you create multiple hash functions and you store multiple values. We actually store 32,000 of these hash values for every concept in an I2B2 ontology. So we end up spent saving millions of um, counts, but that's that sketch database is still far, far smaller than your original I2B2, which may have billions of data points. So here's an example. We ran this on a um, national claims database with 70 million patients and 12 billion facts. We have a pretty robust server. Standard I2B2, this takes up about four terabytes of data, and queries can easily take over 20 minutes in this. Um, in our sketch-based version of um, I2B2, it's only five gigabytes of data, and queries take on the order of milliseconds. Um, the, er the error is very predictable. Um, there's mathematical equations. Um, William helped me uh, develop a lot of those um, to guess what the error is going to be. So I specifically put some concepts together where I knew it would create a larger error than sort of your typical 1% error by these other queries. Um, but I, you can know that if this is going to be a query that doesn't run very well, in 30 milliseconds, I can let it run for an entire second to lower down that error. So it's very adjustable based on what you need for time and um, accuracy. So let me try to show you what this looks like 
integrate into I2B2. All right, so this is the national claims data set. You can see by the counts of the ontology, we have tens of millions of patients. Um, drag over how many patients have at least one diagnosis. Um, we modified the I2B2 web client with Nick Bennett's help. Um, added this drop-down menu here. So it's, it's a query method. So our options are no sampling. So this is standard I2B2. We get the exact answer and it's going through the entire um, I2B2 tables. There's a thing called a Boolean only estimate. So this is if your query is just ands and ors and nots, you can run this one and it runs very fast and it uh, gets a 1% error. If you start adding more complex things, temporal queries, other kind of stuff, you can do the faster estimate with 10% error, or you can wait a, a second or two and get the, the accurate estimate. I'm gonna start with um, an exact answer over here with diagnoses that comes back right away with the actual answer. And this is because this is using the clinical query two roll-up table. I've already pre-computed what the number of patients are that have um, diagnoses. Um, I can put a uh, date constraint on that, like how many patients have diagnoses since January 1st, 2010. Instead of having one row to look at up in, this will um, scan through my um, path patient one and still give me an exact answer um, within a second or so. Where things get really complicated is um, when you start building complex queries like this, where I'm going to put diagnoses, medications, lab tests, procedures. So a query like this in normal ITV2, you're taking the entire fact table, joining it to itself multiple times to do these ands and ors. Here we have 12 billion facts. Normal ITV2, this takes 20 to 30 minutes. Even my optimized clinical query too, with the aggregate tables, all contained within a database, I ran this yesterday, it took four and a half minutes to run. Um, I'm not gonna make you all sit through that, just believe me on that one. What we can do here is the um, sketch version of it. So this is just a Boolean only one on that. And um, it tells me here 24 million patients. Here, whenever you're doing things with sketches, there's an error associated with it. So this knows that this is 95% um, chance that it's um, one point, within 1.66% of uh, the actual value. In the query status over here, it tells us this, the compute time was less than a tenth of a second. You can't, I2B2 doesn't record milliseconds. That's as good as I can show you here. And then next to the, the answer, it says Boolean only estimate just to um, stores in the database that this wasn't an exact answer. It was based on some um, potential error there. Uh, if I put a date constraint on this, I'll do the I can't use the, the Boolean only one anymore, so I switch to run a fast estimate. So again, this is in real time getting you um, an answer, which in ITV2 would have been a half hour to get to this. Um, is the faster estimate is 14% error. I can, I said tune this, so I can say, okay, instead of the fastest one, I don't need milliseconds, maybe two seconds is good enough for me. I can switch over from fast to an accurate estimate. For the fun of it, let's do some breakdowns. All right, so that was four seconds. We got the error down to one, 0.26%. We have a gender breakdown. Here it did a breakdown across a thousand different FIWAS categories, ranked them and pulled up the top five. So when you're doing things in the order of milliseconds, you can do thousands of things within a few seconds. As opposed to if I was doing this in ITB2, I'd have to do a thousand 20 to 30 minute queries in order to do the similar kind of um, FIWAS thing over here. So, you know, the way you would normally use this, I'd put this either on the the faster setting or on the accurate setting, run a whole bunch of queries, get a pretty good idea of what my data looks like, and then before I go and publish my paper, I switch to the no sampling one, wait, go have lunch, come back, and I um, confirm my final answer. So this allows you to really explore in real time massive amounts of data 
what's really kind of interesting about Sketch is that it doesn't scale with the number of patients. Um, if I went from 70 million patients to 7 billion patients, the queries would take the exact same amount of time. It scales with the complexity of the ontology and the types of queries that you're doing. Um, so that's a, a sort of a different way of thinking about it. You're always thinking about I2B2 with how many patients do I have in there, what's the size of my fact tables, that's how everyone kind of reports things. When you transform things into sketches, that doesn't, um, that dimension doesn't uh, matter anymore. You're, look, you're working on sketches of concepts that you're uh, mathematically operating on. The next thing I want to show is LEAF. So this was um, uh, a completely new application that was developed by University of Washington. Uh, uh, the people I've been working with over there are Nick Dobb, Cliff Patel, and Liz Zampino. The, the, they've been working on this for many years. They released the code open source a couple months ago. Um, it was inspired by ITB2. I think they had used it for a while, but they had there were limitations in the ITB2 user interface, so they wanted to create a brand new UI. And as part of that, they rewrote the back end as um, C sharp.net program. Leaf uses two databases. One is called the Leaf DB. This is um, uh, so sort of similar functionality to the ITB2's ontology and project management cells. It stores your ontology, accounts, settings, previous queries. And then there's a second database which stores your actual data. Um, by default, they use OMOP, but um, the way they define their ontology are SQL queries. So in ITB2, you have a path that represents a hierarchy of concepts. There, it's literally SQL. So you can change the SQL to point to really any kind of database. It doesn't have to be OMOP. So, um, after a decade of all the terrific work from them, my group um, has spent a week on this, and um, that's my con tiny contribution, but we created a database script that will take an I2B2 ontology and transform that into the SQL statements that go into the LEAF database to point back to the I2B2 um, CRC data cell. So in the end, let me show you what that looks like. So LEAF has some extra things they've added. The first thing when you go in there, you say you're doing quality improvement or research, and you have um, access to identified data. As you'll see, at first it looks a lot like I2B2. There's an ontology on the left. There's different query groups over here on the right. But it has like a new skin to it, a much more kind of modernized look and feel. Um, start dragging in things like diagnoses in here. A big thing that Leaf wanted to do in the user interface is make it read like English. So you see, has over here, I'm looking for patients who had any diagnosis. So I drag in diagnosis and it transforms it into had any diagnosis. Every concept it has is sort of translate to an English sentence to help you read through and understand what the queries are doing. Um, I can open up demographics, age, um, just like I2B2, if you put multiple things in the same box, you're oring things together. It's nice. It says, I had any diagnosis and age 35 to 44. It has an or over there. It tells you these things are or together. Um, you can change the and to and not. I'm going to put a laboratory test in. Where they deviate a bit is on a number of different things. So you can do ands and ors a similar way of I2B2. In I2B2, if you want to start doing temple queries, it's a little bit cumbersome, and you have to switch to these different screens. In LEAF, you build downwards to represent temple queries. So here, instead of if I do drop white cell count over here, I'm looking for a diagnosis or a white cell count. If I put it down here, I'm looking for patients who had a white cell count in an encounter um, that also had a diagnosis. We can change the same encounter to different kind of temporal relationships. So across our ands, um, sort of a little bit down our ors, and then further down you build out um, temporal queries. You can see the whole query on this one screen as opposed to an ITB2 where things sort of flip around on different um, screens. It's a nice way of doing it. Um, modifiers are difficult in I2B2. You have to put things in different um, query groups and link things through a same instance. Here again, it, they make it a lot more intuitive. I've had a diagnosis. I can just click on options over here 
and say I'm looking for an admission diagnosis, laboratory test, click value here and type in um, looking for greater than 10 patients or something like that. Um, so it's a nice clean interface. This, again, this is running on the I2B2 demo data with a 133 patient set. I'm just going to, to show you the next part of it, create a new query. So all patients with diagnoses run it. The number of matching patients appears up on the top. And I can view this in various ways. Click on map. It shows me I've set up um, my data set over here. This actually supports federated queries. So if I had this hooked up to multiple data sets across the country, it would show me where they're located. I can click on visualize and it gives me my demographic breakdowns and it even has a patient list viewer where I can scroll through my patients either in de-identified way or fully identified way. So um, it was really cool. It's an entirely new interface for ITV2 that was developed over a 10 year period. You made it open source and literally a week we're able to get it running on top of an I2V2 instance. So next steps for this. Um, we have uh, working with the technology transfer office at um, Harvard and Beth Israel where Clinical Query 2 is created. We're looking for some sites to be our initial beta testers to give us some feedback and uh, help us work out all the you know, bugs before we release that more broadly. And with LEAF, um, LEAF is so new that they haven't even figured out all the sort of details of what it means to be open source. So we created a script and we're trying to figure out how do we even kind of give it back to them right now so that ITB2 sites can use it. So that's what we're working on right now is um, how to contribute the code back, um, how to report bugs to the LEAF team, and scalability. You know, we've been testing this out on a small ITB2 data set, but how does it scale up? And of course, at some point, we may want to look at how can we take some of the performance gains that we did in Clinical Query 2 and um, bring them into a new user interface, I believe. Thank you. We have some time for some questions. Yes. How does we compare with uh, the IPT conversion in terms of uh, the scale? Um, so I saw there was only 133 patients in the open system. Can they handle the same sort of scale? I, I think at, at um, University of Washington, they're running this on, you know, millions of patients. Um, that's on an OMOP database. Uh, I'm not sure yet about the scalability on an I2B2 database. Um, the way LEAF works, it constructs one big SQL statement that gets run. I2B2 breaks it up into each query group and then merges them together. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure um, what will happen yet when you put that a single database query on you know, a 70 million patient I2B2. Um, the, the way they rebuilt um, kind of I2B2 and leave has a lot of parallels to what we did with Clinical Query 2. So um, I don't think it would be that difficult to go to the part in their program that constructs the SQL query and kind of break it up and point it as sketches in the same way that we're doing with Clinical Query 2. So our first thing was is it really open source? Can we get it installed? And can we get uh, it pointing to an ITB2? And then the yeah, next thing we got to do is figure out um, how we're going to work with the LEAF team, how do we test the scalability of it, and um, what actually needs to happen to it so that institutions can use this in the role. Yeah? Can we talk a little bit about the ETL processing that you do for your CPU2 to maintain you know, some of those aggregate yeah. So there's a um, there's a store procedure that gets run after you load up your normal ITB2 that will take your fact table and construct the aggregates. The reloading of a fact table takes far longer than the other ones. Once you've indexed that fact table and everything, the, the collapsing it down into the roll-up tables is, is tiny compared to the rest of it. So like at Beth Israel, um, it takes me about 24 hours to update my fact table and then about an hour to update those um, aggregate roll-up tables. So it's just a thing you stick on at kind of the end of the ETL um, of a long process getting to that. And you update what, once a week or so? That is we do it more like once a month or so. Okay. Um, uh, and then 
you can do so setting inside a clinical query too on whether or not you want to use the roll up tables or not. So um, if you turn that off, it'll just run every query like a regular ITV2 query. So if, if there's a delay in the processing of those roll ups, you can. Um, I'm looking at myself too. <laughs> That's very so uh, yeah, so um, so uh, you can you can turn those off. What we actually do is kind of run two instances. So I have a stage instance of ITB2. I do my 24-hour processing, and I have, I sort of flip the website between the two parallel. Yes. It's um. My, uh, my brilliant postdoc moving to a faculty position at University of Toronto calls a clever sampling. So it's pulling out selected patients and selected facts and morphing them in certain ways and creating aggregates based on them. So the sketch database is not like 1% of your original fact table. It's taking multiple things, merging them together and storing statistical properties about them. And then you can merge those in a certain way to get the right answer out. It's uh, it, when I first saw this, it looked like magic to me that you're able to, that it actually works. But um, you know, the if you took you know I'm compressing the database down by like a thousand fold. So if you took one every thousand patients out of your database, you get an enormous error. You know, for example, if you have rare diseases that occur in less than one in a thousand patients. You're probably not going to get any in, in your database there. So it's um. It, it's a sort of combination of sampling as well as um, aggregate account properties that go into these sketches. It's all in, well, we, we have it in, um, uh, in clinical query too, everything's in SQL stored procedures. The, the algorithms that we're using, these have been around for decades and there's papers and lots of implementations of them. Um, we have a, a standalone um, scripts up on GitHub where if you just want to try some different sketching algorithms. We have some benchmarking and other things in that that are independent of I2P2. Um, but in, when it's running inside a clinical query too, it's TSQL stored procedures. Yeah. You invited uh, beta users to step up. Can you give us your email or website so people can look into it? Yes. Yeah, so, um, So email me. Um, I'm uh, I'm trying to get it's sort of split between Beth Israel and Harvard. So I'm working on the technology transfer offices there. So they both agree that Harvard is the lead one, um, but they want to at this point now like you to email us, and then they have like a a meet a phone call before they sign the license thing. So we, before we get to the point where it's just I can point you to the website and you download the code. So um, uh, or download the code. Just to yeah. see what we saw in this today. Or to try it out. Yeah. Um, the I can set something up here. Now the thing with the sketches is that you you don't get the benefit of it unless you have massive amounts of databases. It, for the for the ITBT demo, 133 patients, it would probably run slower in sketches than it would on the um, actual thing. Because I'm storing um, I'm storing five gigabytes or so of sketch. So your I2B2 data set is far smaller than that or probably run even faster. So you know, we, we can set one up, but um, um, unless you're running on like a real um, system, you don't you don't see anything out of it. I don't know if that, but that's actually a pretty good point on how to um, create a demo of it that's not on actual data. Um, we need I think in general for I2B2 transmog, we need some large synthetic data sets. 10,000 order of magnitude 10,000 too small? The sketch is 32,000 values. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you don't start seeing benefits unless you're sort of like 10 times greater than that. So this is for this is for sites that have millions of patients, you know, million or more patients. If you're dealing with thousands of patients, um, uh, you know, cl clinical query two will still be easier to manage than regular ITB2, but you're not going to get the speed benefits that you see with sketches. So, 
license Right now, it's a uh, Harvard's called like a, a free academic license, kind of like RedCap. Um, for our first kind of beta users. So that doesn't allow the redistribution because we don't want sort of junky code. <laughs> but once we polish it up, then we'll figure out a better way of... Um, no, not yet. I think we want to, we got to figure that out. Um, you know, it, there's, I don't want to release something open source if it's not really open source and allowing people to contribute it back and there's no support for it. Um, you know, but if there's a bunch of people who are actually interested in contributing back to it and adding functionality, then I'd love to be, have it open source. Um, not everything, not everything will is best served by you know initially releasing it as um, under Mozilla. So I just mean for you, you update your, you build your regular ITV2, and then you run a database store procedure to update the derived tables. So the aggregate tables and the sketch tables. And that usually takes a fraction of what it took to build your original fact table. So at Beth Israel, it takes about 24 hours to update our raw data, and then an hour to rebuild all the derived tables. It, it probably is better than the plus or minus three that um, uh, that happens with regular ITV2. The plus and minus three, you know, you run multiple queries and you can figure the stuff out. This is like, this is real information loss that's that's in the sketch and um, you can't kind of reconstruct it that way. So, you know, it, it is probably, a, uh, is that, I didn't talk about it today, but there's also, you can run sketches in federated query mode as sort of a privacy preserving um, uh, linkage mechanism. So there's a lot of privacy um, characteristics of it. I'm focusing today on the performance part of it. We can, I can certainly talk to you uh, about that. Um, there are a lot of different use cases for this stuff. I'm not sure when 1% error is needed or when 10% error is sufficient or a hospital, what an IRB, what they want masking on it, but um, you know, with the sketches, all that is tunable. All right, thank you. I'll talk to other people in the break.